And for me, I'm, I'm interested in a lot of things about your style of speaking. So for example, when you are, when you're asked to speak in front of a group or maybe do a presentation like this one you did in Finland, how do you prepare for that? Like, what is your process? Mm, yeah, beautiful. Um, thank you for all those compliments. So <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, an event like that. So my main thing is when so I always I reverse engineer and anything in my life like that I would do that so when someone leaves this room or after mm -hmm. they've experienced this talk this event this experience what do I want them to know believe and feel like that's I'll start with that as soon as they leave what do I want them to know that's the intellectual so there's things I need to teach them believe that's that fundamental right to make the most transformation many people have to transform their beliefs so what I want them to believe how do I want to transform you know have them experience something new in in, in my presence and what I'm sharing and feel which is empowered inspired creative whatever it is that the message of that talk um so I start with that and then reverse engineering I'll look at what would go into the talk to experience that so okay these four distinctions so this one in Finland it was like right it was about building, you know, everyone wants A players, but A players don't want to work for B leaders. Like you have to be an A leader. That was the keynote. So how do, how do I help them be an A leader and reverse engineering the distinctions that go into that talk distinctions being living from radical responsibility, leading from, you know, um, empowered consciousness, some fundamentals of actually running your team and then the beliefs work. And when I think about beliefs work and transforming someone's belief in a, in a talk or an event, it's a lot of storytelling, right? Because I mean, you need to believe obviously what you're, what you're sharing, but, but for someone to have the same epiphany or transformation that you had, often mm -hmm. the best way to do it is through a story. So got the distinctions. What are the key stories around this mm -hmm. content that's going to help them transform their beliefs? The example in the keynote, most people think that teams are really hard and team, you can't trust team and no one will do it like me and everyone's useless. Like that's what a lot of people think when they go to hire. And I knew for that keynote, I was like, they, they need to believe that this is going to be amazing, that this is going to help them grow their business, that you can trust people, you can let go. Um, so in, in order to help them transform that belief, I had to do a lot of stories around my journey with that, right? Like learning to trust people, how our business boomed when we had a team, like really adding to that. And then of course, one thing I used to skip over a lot, and I'm still probably a little bit guilty of it, but is like, I would just get on stage and just start, like, let's just get into it, you know, distinctions, mm -hmm. come on, who doesn't want to learn? <laughs> And mm -hmm. after people would ask me so much more, like, but who are you? Why are you talking about this? Yeah. How did you end up here? Mm -hmm. And so then I, add, I, so then whenever I do my planning, I'm like, and what's my story? Like, yeah. Why am I here? Who am I for these people? Um, yeah. Why have I been invited onto this stage? Right. Like to really create context for them. So that's kind of how I would reverse engineer the, the planning and preparation. I'll practice it a few times. I'm not an, I'll be honest. I'm not an overly, um, overly engineered you probably can see that from my style like once the frameworks are in I do flow a little bit um, meaning I don't sit at home and rehearse it non-stop that said yeah. when I was little I did do speech and drama so I do have a tendency to be able to remember things recall pretty fast we did a lot of like poems and prose and stuff when I was little so my recall like once I have the framework there the recall is pretty quick yeah um and then I then a few days before the event, I'll visualize it the way that I want to experience it. So I'll float, I'll use timeline therapy. I'm timeline master practitioner. I'll float 15 minutes over the event, like in my timeline, imagine 15 minutes of the event is complete. What was the experience? How did it feel? What are people saying? How do I feel? And I'll put that, I'll mentally rehearse that and put that in my body so that yeah. instead of focusing on me floundering or saying something funny or weird or falling on stage, I'm focusing on what I've mentally rehearsed. Sure. Um, yeah. And then my last piece, I just surrender and see whatever's going to come up. You know, I'm like, let's go. Let's see what's yeah. in the room. Yeah. Yeah. Well, a couple of things yeah. you said really resonate with me. One of the things that people come to me preparing for presentations and almost almost 99 100% of the time 
they forget to connect with the audience first. And they forget to tell their story or who they are or have some piece of something that that connects them on a deeper level. And they just go, you know, like you said, straight to the agenda. What are we going to do? And it's it's really, it's a shame because that connection is the first thing that you need to do in order for your message to even be transmitted. So yeah, I'm I'm always coaching people to share more, share more, share more. And the the common pushback I get is like, oh, well, no one wants to hear about me. It's like, well, actually, no, they do want to hear about you. So yeah. I'm, I'm glad to see that. And, that that's and I find, yeah, and I find that now when you're listening, you know, if someone doesn't create themselves or their story or the context of, it's, it's actually really hard to listen to them because your brain, um, it's like an open tab. I'm like, who is yeah. this person? <laughs> yeah, because what I found is that you can't, you can't, uh, like geolocate them in your mind. Yeah. yeah. Who is this person? How, like, what is the relationship? How can I relate to them? And if you don't have any information, then you can't relate. And then, yeah, it's just like a waterfall and you can't put the water in anything. 